Welcome back to the Face Ignite Halo European Open, where we just saw Revive take their spot in Championship Sunday tomorrow. And conveniently, you predicted Revive were going to win. And Dan has, has gone away. We've now got Wonder Boy joining yep. us up on the desk. He couldn't face <laughs> seeing you guys after the uh, the wrong predictions. But yeah. Don't blame him, to Some be fair. predictions from you today, Harry. Yeah, it's not been too bad. Made one wrong one, I'm not going to lie. But... Uh, it's understandable because, you know, they mostly focus on Halo 5 anyway. They'd come in for a bit of fun to see what it was like. They've had their fun. They're done and dusted pretty much. But, uh, yeah, improv early it was uh, quite impressive from what I've seen. But this match should be a lot more even than we expected considering the other series we've watched earlier today. Yes. So this is our final game that we're going to be delving into today. And we've got Stush versus Demonica, which we haven't... I don't believe we've seen either of these uh, teams on stream yet, if Certainly I'm wrong. Certainly not on the mainstream. No, I think not we mainstream. jumped into a game three of Stush Gaming yes. earlier again. Uh, back to classic. Oh, yes, because you were able to give us a little overview. A little, of what yeah, a little on the floor update. So <laughs> we're now going to be seeing them in a, in a more of a feature length series, so to speak. Uh, and it's the first time we're seeing Demonica proper. I don't yes. know. Yeah. Uh, considering we yeah. have Demonica purple, uh, do we just call We've them Demonica? Them twice. Yeah. I Demonica think, yeah. just been everywhere yes, today, yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> like, we just can't get enough of them. I guess just a bit more. The Demonica main team, the A team. I yeah. don't know. I don't know how we are addressing them. But either way, we're seeing Demonica for the first time. So, considering both these two teams, I think we were discussing before two and one. This is a chance. You win this series, you're in the bracket. Yes, exactly. And I mean, we are really narrowing down the competition now. This is the final game to make sure they get into that Sunday. Who are you going to be keeping an eye on in terms of the players coming into this? For me, uh, when I look at the Demonica side, I'm looking at Godly as the name that really, really springs out. I remember back when I used to compete uh, a few years ago now, back in the Halo 4 era, he was always a player. Whenever I came up against him, yes, I know I'm talking about Halo 4, this is Halo 3, but he was always a player that no matter what roster he was on, no matter what teammates he had beside him, whenever you went up in a one versus one against him, he always gave you problems. And if you can get Godly starting to, to roll for this Demonica squad, then, then maybe uh, you're looking at an easier time of things than maybe if he wasn't firing. So. Uh, if you're asking me for a player to watch from them, I think it's probably probably going to be godly. I'm not going to lie. I loved having a BR fight with him. Any chance I got, like, we both love giving it the big and so, you know, <laughs> trying to be the bigger <laughs> guy there. But sometimes I'd lose just a lack of practice, but he's lack of practice as well. So I've got, actually got no excuse. But the Demonica, <laughs> sorry, that's the Demonica team. But with the Stash team anyway, I've been looking at players like Icon, mainly because of the fact that, you know, some Halo 5 experience here and there. He's a very good FFA player. Can he transition it to Halo 3? Yes, he can. But how well can he do it? How how much has he actually played on this game in comparison to Halo 5? Penguin, he's been a bit of a veteran in the scene. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of events underneath his belt. But it'd be weird to see how we can actually do, because I know he has his ups and downs with his consistency. Same with Manatee as well. Manatee's been around for about six or seven years on the side of Demonica. So he's got experience there to maybe help the team progress in certain ways, which may lift them up a little bit, but we'll have to see. And Shotty, I feel like it's a bit of a weird one, because in Halo 5, I wasn't really too sure about him. But he's actually done a lot better in Halo 3, in my opinion, in terms of his uh, individual skill. Well, definitely. And we're going to be taking a look at the maps that are going to be playing out in this round for the final game of the day. So everything is on the line here. And of course, uh, this is our, from, our, from our Group D teams. And this is how round four is going to play out. So uh, the same as what we saw for our previous game. Yeah, Heretic Flag, Narrow Slayer, Construct King, the first three. And if you're asking sort of win conditions for both teams, for me uh, on the Stush gaming side, you you got to get Penguin firing with that sniper. Unfortunately for them in game one, Heretic, that weapon not in play. You gotta shut down Godly on the other side. As I said before, if he can get rolling, it's hard to make him stop. And he's a big guy as well. He's very deep voice. He's gonna let you know. He's one of those players that if he starts screaming across, he's he's certainly gonna get in your head. And then Construct King for me is about whichever team obviously can get organized in game quickly. And on paper, I really can't call it between these two. So for me, taking one of the first two game types if you're either team is very important to start maybe extending the series and, uh, and head towards that game five. Well definitely we were talking about game five with uh, with Dan in our previous segment he was saying how hectic and sort of 50-50 that game type can be. Do you see it going to that many maps? I would like to because AMTS is just crazy. It's just mental sometimes you know and both teams really want to give it especially on the Demonica side. I feel like from what I've seen from Demonica you know they were playing uh, SLG's team earlier with 92i and they weren't really impressing me. They actually could have taken into a game five, but sadly they were up 4-2 on Heretic Flag, got too comfortable and then lost it in the end, which was, you know, very unfortunate because it does show there is some talent on that roster. They have been working quite hard leading up to this event, but I feel like 
you know, with Monica now, it's in their favour. To it's in their ballpark, really, right now. And I think they're the team who don't want it to take to map five, not the other team. And if they do, that's when they realise their chances may go downhill. Well, going into tomorrow, I just wanted to highlight some of the teams that we are definitely going to be seeing tomorrow. We've got Tox, we've got Lucendi, we've got RBL, we've got Improv, uh, Mesa, who came through, obviously, the EU qualifiers. Are there any names you've seen that particularly surprised you that they made it through? Or have there not been many upsets for tomorrow? Um, if you said to me that a team like Improv would be would be going through, um, based on on their names on paper without actually seeing them perform, I, I certainly certainly that would have shocked me coming into this tournament. But after seeing them here again, it, it's so hard to to quantify how much of a different game it is when you come to this this kind of environment because there's no delay, there's no there's no funny business that happens on land. No excuses. There, there you, have, you have nowhere to run and hide if you're one of those players that maybe benefits from your online connection. And, yeah. and these guys are obviously land players. They've turned up on the day and they've uh, certainly made the bracket and, and shocked me. Yeah they, yeah, they were setting up really nicely. When they were getting the caps, you know, they were holding the cells, making sure that, you know, no one was out of place. It was very strange to watch because I thought things would get a little bit messy. But, yeah, I was actually was really impressed. I was quite shocked, actually, to be honest. And with players like C1O, who've been around for a while but not been to too many offline tournaments, he, you know, did one of the best on that team. I said to him and Diddums will probably do the best, and they did. But in with Demonica now, they've got enough experience. They seem a lot more pumped compared to other teams. There'll be ones, you know, kind of shouting and getting a bit leery. So we'll have to see. Well, very exciting stuff. And I'm going to get into your predictions, Harry. Let's start with you over in there. What are you going to be making of this game? This is a, a fun game because I'm pretty sure most of these guys uh, across the stage from each other are going to be friends. Um, so the, the, not only is it a place in the bracket at stake, like, but also bragging rights. I would be surprised if Demonica don't win this. Um, I think there's certainly some games to be dropped in there for them, but I think it's a 3-1 or a 3-2 win for Demonica. Sadly, I'll have to agree with him. It will be a 3-1 or 3-2. It's yeah. definitely going to go to at least a map 4-5. But that map 5 could swing either way, could swing any roundabout. And it depends how good Emma's reaction is. It's the awareness. The awareness on that map, I cannot say enough, just because the spawns can be a little bit random at times. And that's where you can get caught off guard. So we'll have to see what happens if it does go to that. Well, I'm quite excited to see a series get to a fifth map because we've really been seeing those three <laughs> ones and those three zeros. Yeah, fingers crossed we can have a, a really good one today. But let's have a look at our uh, user predictions for what we've been sent in the chat. Wow. So very much going with the side of Sush there. Is that a surprise to you guys? Yeah, it has actually. Maybe the chat uh, just have a little bit of favoritism yeah, going. Yeah, favorites, right? But to be fair, you know, I'm not going to complain against them. There always is that possibility because we don't know too much about one or two of the players on that squad. Maybe they know a little bit more than I do. So we'll have to see because I know about the Demonica squad a lot more. I'm mainly going on almost veteran experiences. So we'll have to see. Well, thank you guys very much for that. We are going to be heading into our final game of the night, Casters. Let's take it away. Thank you very much indeed, desk team. Yes, well, it's not actually a desk. It's more of a seating team, isn't it? Couch team. No, not even a couch. It's like uh, mini couches. A mini Ikea couch team. team. Ikea team. Yeah, that works. We'll go with that. Yeah. Either way, I'm looking forward to this game. I very think it'll be a closer so. one than what probably most people uh, are presuming. Um, Harry touched on it on the desk. We were looking through all the players that are going to be on this. The kind of, and this is like that middle of the pack end of players that turn up to Lamb. We know some names on there. I personally teamed with Nick as a, as a makeshift and actually won some games. They've been knocked someone out of the competition before, so that's one interesting one to come. But certainly a uh, big fan. Look forward to see what Nick Preston can do. A lot of these players, again, from both sides of the coin, they know each other well. They're good friends. They've been playing each other for a while. Um, and I believe Harry says that whoever wins this one is guaranteed to play tomorrow. Yes, they are. A guaranteed place in the championship bracket, which guarantees you top 12 minimum. And a top 12 placement is pretty much where these teams have placed before, and they have got into that top 16, top 12, and they're usually fairly happy with the top 12 placement. But if you can get top 12 and go in through the winner's bracket, or through even if into the loser's bracket, you've got a real chance of getting into that top 8, maybe even top 6, who knows? Uh, that's what we'd like to see these teams potentially try and get into those upper echelons because that's what they all want to achieve. They want to be able to say that they've got to a top six or even a top eight placement on land because that's what it's all about at the end of the day is bracket rights. As Harry quite rightly said, you know that you're not going to be winning an event like this. You know you're not going to be able to take down even the likes of Tox, but also some of the top not European teams as well. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just a realist, Sims, and uh, even when I was competing back in the day, I, I, I knew there were teams that out, were out of my range, and you, you aim for your top four or your top six. You aim for your top 32, and it was fine. Realist Sims sounds like realist Sims. Realist Sims. That's, I like that's, that. If I ever play again, that's my team name.
Shook on screen at the moment, picks up a double. That's going to be P3 going down. Three grenades pretty good. It should just remove the shields and allow his teammates to pick it up. But the flag's on the move. Three grenades go through. That's going to be a bit of an avoidance. But I'll tell you what, that window shot is fantastic. Penguin, he picked up a double and managed to stop a flag run earlier on. While Mister on the opposing other side of the map manages to stick it in. So, 1-0 up, bag of flag. Now the pressure put back on the blue team. Yeah, I mean... The analyst desk were predicting that Demonico were going to take this one, but currently behind 1-0, and they've just really struggled to control either side of the map, and they've just been pushed off spawn so much by Stush Gaming that Penguin is just on a tear. Nice double kill as well, holding down P at the, at the moment, and not afraid to challenge, even on no shields, to help a teammate, and that is always showing a fantastic Halo player. People who are more than happy to sacrifice their own life to keep their teammates alive. Because of his haircut, now I can see what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, that helps. But uh, Penguin definitely is... A player that's been probably, I think we can say from events that we've been past. Um, human is another player that I would we are not actually hear funnily enough, but Penguin and Human always used to be the ones that we see these duos. It's the people that always turn up to land, regardless of where it is, what event it is, what prize pool. The Halo is very deeply rooted within the UK. Um, there are some fantastic players out there, and people will just attend the circuit continuously. And no matter what game it is, no matter what, they will always turn up. And these ones on the screens are going to be part of that. It is 2-0 at the moment. Let's just touch on that for a second. We did see a second one go in. But it was indeed. Uh, Penguin has been picking up some good kills. I think we've seen two flag stops out of him now. Coming off the back of two doubles working it round. Midship. I know it's not called midship. We go for the back of the Heretic. Um, but Heretic being the map that it is. P2 control, P3 control. I said in previous ones, it's not necessarily as strong as what it was in Halo 2, but on a map like this, it gives you so much of an arm's reach into the eyes of the enemy, being able to see where they are, preempt what they're going to do, stop attack, stop pull, stop pushes. Feeding that communication back to your team is just so imperative on this map. However, one of the biggest mistakes that teams make is they run the flag P side far too often, but we can see Stutch here doing exactly the opposite, running at car, the better side to run the flag, got so much cover, and unless anyone's there to stop this, this should be a three. 3-0, and that is the perfect way to start in this opening of this game, because now you are two flags off of actually winning this one. And Demonica, they're really struggling with these quick caps from Stush Gaming. Little mini 900 IQ play. Jumps behind the sword platform to give himself a bit more defensive stamp before going down. Penguin will be a nuisance here. Everyone's all eyes upon him, and while doing this, it allows his teammates to preempt an attack and get set up for it in a loud. Just being a nuisance and being a, a point of contact for enemies to look at. If they're looking at one guy, you can have the rest of your team, you know, it's a distraction. That's, that's the whole point of it. The master, bit of a tag on the wall there, so it will slow down this pull, which ultimately leads to his death, unfortunately. Icon will pre nade. Hopefully, someone goes for the recap. Does drop down and accidentally finds a kill. I don't believe the call was there because it was more of a check rather than a preempted look. And he didn't actually get the kill either, but he is actually going to eventually finish off shotting the doggy. Somehow he survived despite Lane. getting four shots in the back. And now this is the communication situation for Stush Gaming. Icon picked up the flag and he's probably asking, right, where should I be going with it? Do we have P control? Can I go carbine? He kind of got lost and there was a few players looking at him, so that's why he's now just trying to survive. But ideally you want to be running at car, but there are times where you can run at P as well if you have certain control on the map and you know where your opponent is spawning. Uh, so as long as you're available to adapt on the fly on Heretic, you're always going to be in a decent place running the flag. Completely off topic here, but I want to give a huge shout out to Fisher because this setup that it, it's nice as a cast to turn up to a setup which is just incredible. Preview monitors, all the POVs in front of us. It just looks so damn good. This stream is so crisp. Player counts, names, everything. Like it, the graphics package that these guys have got going. Uh, honestly, from a casting POV, from a Halo and fan POV. I hope we get a, a hell of a lot more eyes on it tomorrow at the Mean Championship Sunday. We have some really good games, but big credit to to face it because this looked absolutely superb so far. Something that didn't look superb was that grenade, unfortunately. Does not go into P2, does land at his feet, trips back, takes him down. His enemies allowed to take him out quite easily. H5 Penguin, not quite the Penguin that you may see. However, I believe Zayn is here for the 2v2s tomorrow. He is indeed, uh, alongside Trippy, they're going to be competing tomorrow. Oof. I mean, there was a lot of lot of uh, Halo 5 European players who are probably thinking they're going to pick up some money, and then they see those names turning up tomorrow. I hope uh, Bashford and Doodle have brought their routers with them, because 
run. I mean, if I'm bad, I'll be throwing it across the room at the head and hopefully that does some more damage because that is, that's rough. I mean, Penguin, I know that this isn't Halo 5, but 2016 World Finals, like that, that man since then was just criminal during Halo 5. And even now, we spoke about this in our previous cast, that transitions to this Halo. You can transition that natural talent of spawn control, map knowledge, map awareness, please. I thought we were going to drop it and go for the fall, then it had been fantastic. You love to see it. You, you hit to see it from the opposing POV. Does at least shut down the flag pull again. But still, yeah, we'll see them uh, in action tomorrow. Halo 5 2v2 going down. I believe it's a $5,000 prize pull, if I'm not Indeed. mistaken. We've got 30 grand on the line this weekend. So a lot of cheddar to be played for here in London at a beautiful stadium, by the way. Yeah, beautiful at Twickenham, and uh, it was almost, uh, it was actually tipping it down earlier and looked very interesting with the lights. Uh, Demonica still haven't been able to get a flag on board though, and they're really struggling despite holding this P side. They have not managed to get the flag across the map thus far until now. Finally got that perfect setup, finally got that flag a moving. And that's all you need. You just need to be having eyes on the spawns, having someone who can actually adapt to the situation, move behind, get those spawners with a, a couple of kills. And then suddenly you can run flag after flag after flag because you keep your opponents spawning and they get stuck on this horrible trap. But thankfully for Stush, they're not going to allow any back-to-back -back flags just yet. Should have killed him then. Penguin jumps out one shot. It was a ballsy challenge, but somehow made it work. Manatee running P2. It's it's unorthodox. Um, we'll see if it does make it work. It looks like they have provide. Oh, oh that's no, one. that's on the leg as well, right? Did he, did he get a touch at least? Oh, wow. Okay, so this will be not only the return, but the movement as well. So potential counter cap here. I was going to say the problem is watching Carbine side, but the P1 rush was, was real. And God damn, it worked. Yeah, that, that's always the downside, though, of running the flag P. You leave yourself far more vulnerable to grenades as this flag's going to be put in yet again. And that's going to be a 4-1 lead now for Stush. And some big individual kills coming out from the red team. The sword in the hand of Penguin. And he's just pushing. He's getting aggressive. And this could be another run if they're not careful, because now he can push to these spawners under the base and the car. And he can really do some damage to the sword, but he misses the lunge. A little bit too early, a little bit overzealous. Um, with the Halo 3 sword being as slow as it is, like on midship, you picked up that thing, you were almost indestructible. It'd take a, a new combo from B1 to at least do some damage and remove it. Potential here for a triple. There's two players directly in front of him. It's not there, but he does get it. So one more player. There's definitely three down, and now you can feed that info back to your teammates. And that's going to be game as well. That's the fifth flag in for Stush. And quite rightly, Namusta standing up and letting them know. Penguin also saying, like, Guys, are you going to turn up to this game? Because they completely dominated. Demonica just weren't able to get a control of the map whatsoever. And the flag runs were also fantastic. I mean, the great <laughs> the, the, the great positioning from these guys. And even a wink at the camera from Penguin as well. We'll take a look at the kills any second. Show you the real damage in the back that was done. And that came off the back of individual performances. A standard touch on. Um, on the opposing side, yeah, and we'll give credit where credit due. Shook was putting up good numbers, 20 and 16, eight assists as well on the board. But on the opposing side, everybody, I believe, oh, did go negative. No, excuse me, Penguin did not, but still 15 assists to boot. And the kills that he was allowed to get, I mean, it's very rare. I, I kind of almost spoke on it how it takes a lot on Halo 2 to take down the sword on this map because it was just the lunges that you get off it were ridiculous. On Halo 3, with it being very, very slow, and it'd been a bit of a, a clunky weapon. You see someone wandering around with it, it's like, well, we'll just for it and back off, it's not a problem. To be allowed to get up close and personal like that, it's not really a good sign. Sometimes we see teams just not even touch the sword, to be honest, on Heretic, because it's not as worth it as it was in other it's not iterations weapon, of Halo, sure. as you said. But if you can get up close and personal, and you can use it for that single melee, then it, it, it does work out very well. But Stush, they took advantage of their the situations they put themselves in. Uh, unfortunately for Demonica, despite having the early control, despite having the slays that they did, they weren't moving the flags at the right times. They had loads of P control in the early stages of the game, but then when they were moving the flag, they were running at P and it wasn't really working out for them because the spawners would just grenade them and then they were able to make it messy and get a flag return. Whereas Stush were like, okay, we've got a flag, let's run it car and let's watch the spawns. They just had more success rate with their flag runs and that's what gave them the victory. And uh, really, we're going to have to see better objective work from the Monica if they're going to be able to get back into this series. I think to further expand on the sword play and even that weird scenario down at P where he managed to get the return on the flag, it's not only the story of it's not like European Halo, so to speak, 
but it's the story of open bracket. You, you, weird and wonderful things can happen and you should expect the unexpected. That's why sometimes it becomes quite hard to cast because you don't know what's going to happen. There are very weird and unorthodox plays that you can't get your head around, which shouldn't be allowed to, to work out, but they do because it's the unexpected. And with open bracket, that's what we need to do. We need to expect the unexpected. Little thumbs up there from on the screen. Looks like the players are ready to rock and roll. Fist bumps all around. Yeah, Matty just trying to get the team pumped. That's what you got to do. Get some energy. It's getting late in the day. They've been up since, what, 9 a.m. this morning. Been playing since 10 a.m. That's quite a lot of Halo to be playing back to back to back to back. So you need to inject that energy and get that final push and try and get into Championship Sunday. One good game. It's all it takes to revitalize that. The problem is now is if they go 2-0 down, that's generally speaking where we see their head in their hands. Um, yeah, we don't know how it's going to go down. This is game number two. If Stush win this, I think that's going to be a 3-0 sweep for me. And uh, the actual, the, the closing game of Saturday, day number one. And then we roll into Championship Sunday tomorrow, obviously, because that's how the days go. Rockets, Namaster, checking the backside. I think he's in enemy territory here. Mr. has picked up a double. There's a headshot as well by the look of the medals. Icon directly next to him. Nick, dead. Bye-bye, Goblin. Looking for more through the smoke. Does to settle from the grenade. He does have a tag. No frag just yet. His teammates in front of him and they're just mopping up. So this is great assist work. Even if you're just tagging them like that, as long as the player there with the BR, because you can, it is much easier to finish off on lap with Halo 3. Provided all these tags that he's getting, his teammates are there yep. to just take them down. It's worth every single bullet, right? That's what I was saying earlier. We saw a couple of players who were constantly going for those headshots and they weren't being rewarded for, like, near misses. Instead, just sometimes go for that body shot, get that single tag. Your teammates are going to be able to finish things off. You just don't care about the kills. You want your teammates to get them. You're just more than happy to have the assists. And you're talking about unorthodox games and you're talking about how some games get a little bit messy in the open bracket. Slayer on Narrows has that opportunity because you are going to get one or two players who might just suddenly say, I'm playing pretty well, so I'm going to get aggressive and I'm going to start pushing behind. I'm going to flank a little bit more than I usually do. And you need to be waiting for that. You need to be expecting that. But also, you also have to play your normal methodical game of Narrows. You need to be timing the snipers. You need to be timing the rockets and keeping an eye on those. Because if you let them get out of hand and you, get out, you, you stop tracking them, you're suddenly going to find yourself falling very far behind to power weapons. <laughs> Good God, I've missed this game. Oh, there's a lot of teabagging going on. There is. I'm all for it. More bagging. Shout. Give each other hell. It's open bracket. That's what it's all about. Halo is just an unbelievable game, man. It's like, Halo 3 especially. Halo 2 and Halo 3. Like, watching this from this POV, all I want to do is pick up even... I, I, I'd get bodied in this, but I still just want to pick up a pad oh, icon. And, and do that to people. I mean, Shoot no. their bodies quick. He's, his, he's wasting oh. his ammo, but he doesn't really care at this point because he's out PRing everyone in his Look, icon. If, and, and you've done this to me, so I know from experience, if you can break someone mentally in this game, you win the game. Like, it's easy to do. If you give someone, if you're 1 0 up and you're track talking and just mentally confuzzle them, if that's a real word, it is now. It's uh, it's doable. You, you can you can break people by just single-handedly teabagging them and shooting their bodies. Most people have been in that position where, in the back of your head, no matter how hard you try to put it behind you, you think, "What if we lose this game? What if we lose this series? How am I going to feel? How am I going to react if my if the other team gets up and shouts at me afterwards?" But you need to put those thoughts aside and focus on the task at hand, saying, "All right, actually, how am I going to get back in to this 12-kill difference that I'm currently sat in?" Do I get the sniper rifle? When are the rockets next up? Let's start talking to my teammates, because at the moment, the Monica are really struggling, and we're seeing a lot of individual pushes, and that's just allowing stuff to get further and further ahead. Yeah, they're kind of feeding at this moment in time, which is difficult. Single-handed approaches will not work in a 4v4 game type. The master off the back, plenty of bullets in the bag as well to do a fair amount. One will jump up, goes for the no scope, a bit overzealous. Good work from Godly at least to put him down. So now they can advance forward and maybe try and make something happen, unless that Godly just picked up a double. So he's still doing work top mid and keeping it under control. Steps out again. I'm fine with this approach. Be aggressive. He's got teammates and he's got some help as well. They now need to coordinate this push together. That's disgusting. All right. Manatee's dead. That's a double. Quick scope to boot. Now they make the advancement. Watch top mid. He knows where they're spawning. The callout will be real. Good shut down here to remove the sniper. Rifle. There's another one to deal with from behind. I'm fine with this. Get rid of your snipers. Take top middle control and get something back. The only problem is by doing this, they're giving up death after death. 
And by doing that, you're going further down the rabbit hole when we look towards what's the main objective of this, and it's kills. But if they can get the sniper rifles, if they can control top mid, there's definitely potential for Demonica to get back into this game. A lot of times, when some lower seeded teams, they're in an advantageous position and they find themselves 10, 12 kills ahead, they can throw away leads because they get a little bit a little bit antsy to try and finish the game. So they push unnecessarily. They say, all right, well, let's just get some kills. Or they do exactly the opposite, and they turtle back, uh -oh. and they allow uh -oh. the pressure. As somehow, Shook is allowed to reload, but he doesn't actually get the kill from it. And that's going to be another sniper rifle to Icon. And uh, this game is not going well for the Monica. Mm, Shook shakes his head. I do too. SMH when you're running at somebody with no bullets loaded and ready to go. Instantly shut down, Sniper Apple back in the hands of Icon. He's been hitting some faces so far, let's see what else he can do. Four in the chamber, ready to rock and roll. There's the body, where's the follow-up? Look at the kill feed. No support here from his teammates. Top mid at the moment, trying to get his shields back. Shook goes down, back to back. The Master finds two. Penguin does at least to respond, so that's three to instantly. Now the hunt in the final guy. This is... This is a massacre, damn nearly two more kills. Yeah, this is going to be game, unfortunately, for Demonica. Even though Godly was able to pick up a new sniper, it feels like the call from Demonica to slow this game down came a little bit too late, and they pushed into the, uh, the situation where Stosh would just be able to pick them off one by one when they had both sniper rifles, when they had the rockets, they've got all the power weapon control, and it's been the body shots from all of them with the sniper rifles, trusting their teammates to finish those kills, and now they can pile in for that final one. There it is, Stosh go 2-0 up, and maybe Stush are going to be providing a little bit of a shush after this game against Demonica. Looks like they might be heading out of the tournament if they don't change things very quickly. I just see four kills. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. That's not good. That's not good. I think that's a, that's a hefty negative on one of the players on the opposing blue team. We'll take a look. Yes. All right, 15 assists, most in the game, but still. Walshy says the, the same line over and over again when it comes to Team Slayer. It's not necessarily about how many kills you can get, it's how many deaths you can keep down while doing so. It's okay getting one for and saying, okay, I've got 30 kills. That's fine, you've got 30 points, but if you've got 30 deaths to boot as well, well, you've just almost thrown the game. Yeah, 15 deaths is uh, is just too much, really. Uh, I did see Shotty going over the man cannon, maybe a little bit too much. Arguably, in Narrows, you do have that one player who you often send as a desperate man cannon to try and break up the play, and it can almost be a sacrifice. Unfortunately, his sacrifice was for nothing. The others weren't able to get top middle control because he was either picked out of the air or he was instantly greeted by grenades and battle rifle shots as soon as he landed on the opposition side. Uh, but that's going to be a tough one for him now going into game three because when you personally have a statistic like that, you go into the next game and you, you feel a bit weird about yourself because you're like, what do I do now? I wasn't performing too well, my BR shots aren't on and you're going to be thinking about the wrong things. Again, mentality is everything, as Game 3 is going to be Construct King of the Hill, and when you've just been kind of torn apart in those opening two games, I don't think you're going to be feeling too confident going into this. Yeah, 5-1 to one and 50-33, to 33, it's certainly setting a statement here. Um, you talk about the man cannon in the previous one, there is a lot of YOLO in, and it's okay to do that, I'm fine with man cannon. If you want to go aggressive on man cannon, that, that's, that's great, that's fine but you need your teammates to be backing you up to do so. There has to be an element of aggressive play to that. Your teammates need to be raining down fire from above when we look towards top mid, and then you need someone below who's on the flank, go underneath bottom middle, look towards the opposing side on, fl uh, on the flag, any kind of flank to draw attention away, which means you can land there. Even shots from above, just laying down hellfire, allows you to get across on that man cannon. If you're just jumping across thinking, yay, it's Team Slayer, I'll throw out, what's the old power drainer? The MB, you jump up there, power drainer, it's, oh god, it's that dude again. Do one, kill him, get rid of him, crack on. But doing it in, in, in hardcore TS, I'm sorry, it's a big no-no. Similar things can happen on this map though, just bombing yourself up P's or up the gold lift as well can find yourself in a tricky situation if your opponent is dominating and holding. But you can see, Stosh Gaming right from the get-go have said, all right, we don't care about the early stages of this hill, we want rockets. They've been rewarded with those rockets, and now they can get to the hill. But good double teaming from the Monaco, ensuring there was someone to back them up as long as they were sat in the hill. Three rockets, one kill, and then instantly assassinated. Don't know about that one. Oh well. Sniper there, trying to throw all across. Trying to back away, sword spawns. Icon letting him know, that's fine. He's dead, don't worry. I'd like a percentage of how many bullets have hit enemies whilst they were alive and whilst they were dead for Icon, because I feel like he's hit more shots oh, when they were dead. That's a really solid nade, pick up two of them. Oh man, the awareness, he's got a... Fade away, snipe. Could have happened, could have looked good. Unfortunately doesn't, but still, even though we're looking at his POV, he did die. Unfortunately, Godly would have taken down instantly, look at this. 
Welcome to the lift, boys. That's a good answer back, at least. Two of them are down for now, so they have top middle control, you would think. Where did that sniper come from? That must have been mid-gold, surely. Well, he wouldn't have got there that quickly. We just saw the sniper go down in the, one of the P's, so I presume he pushed out onto the street and maybe he's sniping from there. But we've seen a couple of uh, poor pushes already from both sides, just, again, anxiously pushing up the P's, desperately trying to get like into that. the action, rather than listening to their teammates of where they've just died. Because if you've just seen a teammate die in a P, you don't bomb up the P because it's not really going to work out unless that you know they're a one shot, not when two people are stood there. So you got two people on either street and he was allowed to be assassinated. Why didn't either of the two on the opposing side call that thing out? Like, teamwork, communication, no radar. That's the biggest difference. Yeah, Icon doing really well, being very sneaky. And you get those players in Halo 3. That's why I, I love Halo 3, because as an individual, you can make such an impact with plays like that. And Namasta are also getting the overshield here as well. So now they've got the timings of it. There was no one from Demonica to be seen. They obviously all went up top mid and said, all right, let's just get the hill here. But now this means Stush can, can push with his overshield and probably gain time because of it. It's okay sitting there getting hill time, but... Yes, three dead. If they're allowed to pick up everything else, and most importantly, map control, please, I hope they all don't hit this side because of the sniper rifle behind them. There's one, there's two. Ah, uh, man, they're getting pincered so hard. 360 no scope could have been a real thing. I'm sure that would have been on the top 10 by Chris Pocket rather soon, coming to a, a YouTube near you. But still, monitoring back gold, I'm a fan of this. Back gold's the one place that people tend to not keep their eye on when they're trying to lock down top middle control. All three players on the on the street here. They've all called for some support. Back gold's one, they're both one. So they should theoretically one grenade comes through if someone watching top mid or even just anywhere around that pivotal position. Rather overzealous jump there by Godly, but somehow does stay alive, and now they have to work with what they've got. They come off the lift, they get flooded. I'm assuming now, because they're no longer on this street, that they were killed instantly. The response will be there. You can see one player flies up bottom gold in the lift. So the pre nade should have been real. There is a second follow-up. Two down instantly. And again, it just feels like they're just running at this and throwing bobbies. At the moment, they're feeding down. Yeah, you can't be sending one player up gold lift. Uh, you were talking about not often people watch the gold lift at times, and it's because you can hear the gold lift. So sometimes you think, all right, we can actually stand far away from it. If we hear it, then we'll push. But that doesn't always work to plan, because suddenly you hear the gold lift, you think, oh, I'll go check it, and there's three people stood there. At least if someone's watching it, you know how many numbers there are, you know how much support you need, you can back off, and then you can wait for that help from your teammates. You're around as just three people. Haha, <laughs> well, death is imminent. Three nade down, backs it off the wall. One thing that I love about Halo 3, how you can bank the nades, not even necessarily just off the wall, but off the floor as well. And Stush getting some heal time as well as actually picking up the overshield yet again, but now Demonica are currently residing in the hill, but that's two overshields in a row for Stush. They had the timing down. Penguin was there, he was waiting, and this is going to be very difficult for you. Oh, see idiot. you Ooh. later. Sean, why? All right, come on, Demonica, you've just been gifted an opportunity. The OS guy has gone for a burden off the map. It's very easy to do, though. No, it's not. You know, it's happened to us all. We've all done it. I haven't. Well, don't lie to me. I haven't. Doesn't matter if it's with an overshield, with rockets, with sniper. We've all slipped off construct at one point. It's just when it happens in front of thousands of people, that's uh, that's a little bit different. Do you know what's worse? When you go for that rocket killing, you clip the edge. So you oh, just clip yeah. the, a corner. You just blow yourself up and maybe even one of your teammates like, well, I bollocks that one up, boys, and I'm sorry. One of the worst feelings, especially because Heal. how powerful rockets can be, especially in Construct King of the Hill as well. You can get four guaranteed nice kills. Shot. But yeah, that's decent PR to make up for it for Penguin. That nade, though, this puts two of them weak. Now he's just going hunting. Godless to his left hand side. If he followed this one up, is that the, oh, whoa, I thought I was going to say I actually killed him. Maybe he's down in river. This is why he's been aware. He was down in river, comes up behind him, takes him down. Okay. That's a double. Manatee's here for Heal the follow. Control. Where's the triple? They'll be on the spawn now, so they can get some kind of map control. Get a hold of this map, boys. Make a decision. Don't stand still. You will get tagged up. Don't know why we're standing still in the hill. It's a questionable one, but nevertheless, easy kill for Mister. One, two, thank you. I feel like he probably scoped into one of the streets and was just trying to pick someone out. But again, yeah, you can't be standing still. Just leaves yourself so vulnerable. But you're saying, where's the triple? I don't think the Monica need to be worrying about where's the triple, they need to be worrying about where's the overshield, where's the hill time, how are they getting back into this game? Overshield's going to be popping in around 5 to 10 seconds, so they need to be down there to challenge the Stush boys because we have just seen, finally, the Monica actually Yay. pick up an overshield. Well done, Shirzy, on jumping over and seeing that one.
Godley, time to shine. You're going to make something happen, you got to do it now. Rockets on the opposing team, though, so they have to be aware of this. What do you put together? How do you put this OS to work? Well, what do you rather? Would you rather have Rockets or Overshield when it gets to that nine-minute mark? I think at this point, it depends how many Rockets you've got, because you are uh, you can just you can drive the game which way you want to go. You don't even have to fire. I was speaking about this earlier on. You can just be a nuisance like Rocket Guy, okay? You don't push it because you're dead. You're basically sacrificing yourself for the, the greater good at that stage if you are going to go after a Rocket Guy. With the OS, you can tank up more time in the hill. So in this scenario, it's always good to have the OS. Survive a few more grenades here and there, but certainly Rockets. It's the biggest game changer in, in Halo, unless you snipe down and you're on narrows. Snipe down doesn't count. He's not actually human. I'm convinced he's a robot. He's actually a predator, Although is the official terminology. I did see him eating breakfast oh. this morning, and I don't know if robots oh. eat breakfast. That's uh, a decent couple of kills, though. Again, Heal though, control. Stush just picking up far too much hill time and making it more and more difficult for Demonica to get back into things. It's very hard on Construct to make a big swing, like 70 points, especially when you're getting outslayed by the opposition. Killing spree Heal comes control. through. It's always a worrying sight, especially on an objective game type. Fade away nades there. Hoping one of his teammates has the P covered, so then go for the follow-up. Should he have got a, a tag or a frag off or on several players? Has the information, shouldn't have gone for the shot, should have taken the back smack. They had no idea where he was, he hadn't been spotted. Gets a bit trigger happy. Shot he's fourth down low, that's fine. Be careful of this P, make sure he doesn't jump up, which he does. It takes both the amount of times people just panic. Like, oh, run! I've already tanked up and jump instantly into it and go for the. He'll move. The trade off. He'll Back roll once roll. again. Yeah, he'll be made aware well. of that. I like the fact that they're actually paying attention to goal because it's uh, it's, it's the backdoor engine point, right? You, you just sometimes don't realize that that's the main place to be going if you don't have top control. Uh, did, anyone, trouble. did anyone grab that overshield? It looks like it was Stush Gaming yet again getting the overshield. That'll be their third or fourth of the game. The Monarch have only had one. and. Now with the sniper rifle as well and rocket spawning in around 30 seconds, this is going to put them in such a good stead to actually get onto the course of winning this game and winning this series and it being the first time all day that Lethal is going to be wrong with a prediction on the analyst desk as well. This is if he actually does not work. Switch to the BR, don't go for the second one. You've been gifted a shot, that's fine. Call it out or go for it. Don't whip it, runs away with his life. That's six rounds left on the sniper. Four in the mag, two in reserve. Looking for a new position. Insta's one, that's the body. Not the, quite the head, looks across, that's another tag. Three nades up. And nobody has his streak covered. And that's the problem for snipers now and again. If you don't have the support for your team, okay. Small nuclear bomb goes off, his teammate just goes flying past. Penguin walks through, says thank you very much, that's an easy double. And now they all flood basement area. Shotty's down here and he's waiting. It's a little bit early to be waiting for the overshield, though. So he is hunted by his opposition. Rockets would have spawned. Someone's probably got them at this point, and they're probably going to be doing some damage. It's going to be Icon. And that's not good news for Demonica. I think this series is slowly but surely getting away from Demonica now. And they'll be exiting the competition unless they can do something drastically different. But when Icon is on the tear, look, he doesn't even care that someone's shooting him right now. He just wants to make a statement. Yeah, it's uh, get in the heads. Again, mentally screw them. And at that point, Tilt City is a, a complete and utter reality. Sniper comes up, but really from that position, what can you do? Maybe Godly can do something. Oh, it's, oh God, he's getting melted. You can uh, tentatively bank a nade off that little pillar that is next to the hill from down below and do some damage. Be aware of glass. You can see through it if someone's lingering, hits the peak, but instantly just gets aggressively put in the mask to get, oh my god, all right, well, I respect it. Decent shots, to be fair, from Dudley. I mean, it's very easy to choke those situations. When someone challenges you that aggressively when you've got overshield, you always have that little panic of, ah, I need to get this kill because I have double the shield of them, but he did pretty well. They done some important shots, but at this point, you can't just do pretty well. You have to do something spectacular, otherwise your team's not going to be able to get back into things. And despite the fact that Monica are desperately searching for overshields and they're desperately trying to get hill time, I just can't see it happening. I think this is going to be it for Stush Gaming. I mean, you look at this. Godly's trying to clear out the hill. 
makes some kind of stance, but he's, he's on his own. Where's his teammates? He's fighting a, a losing battle because of three players there. Goes for the no scope. And again, with this many points in front, you can happily do it. Mr. Making a bit of a statement there, shaking his head and shouting something across the stage. I'm fine with it. Long may it continue. That's what open bracket's all about. Get vocal, get loud, and get proud. Please reload your sniper. It's triggering me off the face of the planet. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You only got one shot off with it anyway, and uh, I mean, for the such gaming boys, would they have been thinking they were going to get to Sunday when they were looking at the bracket and they were looking at their group when they were looking at the, the tournament as a whole? Well, judging by how they're playing, maybe they did have that confidence because they've looked phenomenal in this series. They've looked uncontested, and they've looked clearly the better team. Which is a shame for Demonica. I would have liked to see how they would have performed tomorrow in the in the championship bracket, but unfortunately, that's just what happens when you come up against a team who just seems to be better on the day. You're going to struggle. Yeah, there's only 12 seats on the bus for the $25,000 prize pool here in London, and I think we might just be filling one in here once this game's all said and done. You'd expect Stush to be booking a ticket to Championship Sunday. Penguin continuing the assault, but unfortunately. But in Monica, we think this is all she wrote. The master can now just put the nail in the coffin here with this OS, take the hill. Ten more seconds, and that's a big GG. And that should just about wrap up all of our 12 teams that are going to be competing tomorrow. Most of the favorites, if not all the favorites, have gone through. We've had a couple of surprises here or there, but there you go, boys. Quite rightly, a deserved fist bump around because what an incredible 3-0 that was against some good friends, and I'm sure they're going to be able to hold that over their enemies at the time, but friends later, and I'm sure they'll be telling them that for quite some, some months to come. Quick high five from across. Again, it's all friendly banter. Nobody wants to be going out. Nobody enjoys losing. We've all been there, unfortunately, on the, uh, the bitter end of it. But still, as long as it stays in the bracket and doesn't go any further than that and everyone's friends and go for a beer after the event. That's what it's all about. We're all family in here, though. I think we're all too old to actually care about arguments these days, unless you're riots and respectful. Yeah, and well, I mean, respectful's still pretty young, though. Riots is getting old, but respectful's still down there, so maybe, he, forget. maybe he started the argument. I beat him on Ascension not so long back, and I still don't let him down. Well done. Very, uh, very impressed. I've also beaten Respectful on land, but now he is far better player than I am. Quick final look at the stats of our final game of Saturday. Thank you very much all for joining us. I know there's been a few North Americans that did get up early in the morning, the early hours. I too was up with you, don't worry. Fellow friends, I was driving down. So we are all up early together, collectively. And these players also started, I believe, the doors here at Face It's all the staff and everyone's been working since the early hours to get this show on the road and to get it to the level. I mean, I'm, I'm stunned. The show so far has looked absolutely stunning. The, the player cams, the, the quality. I'm really impressed. And uh, I mean, for those American viewers, you're probably wondering how Tox got on. Well, I mean, you should know how Tox got on, Tox. They breezed through their group. I'm fairly certain T and Crumpets also went through their group, but they did lose their game to Mazer Gaming, because so I don't think they went through first. Ooh. Um, not that maybe T and Crumpets weren't expecting to win that, considering how well Mazer Gaming had played in qualifiers, but T and Crumpets is a decent side who have come across. Can you remind me who's on Mazer? Uh, so exactly. Mazer, that will be Havoc's team, Havoc's Flames, etc. Oh, the one that got the actual they got the funding for this. Yeah, Yes, 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 they did. Okay. Well, that's interesting, because you'd expect gun types team to be well you'd expect it to be in championship sunday but also within that top three region yeah i mean uh, they they finished top eight during the north american qualifiers for this tournament or at least some of the players did and this was a bit of a makeshift for them uh, i think if they get into the top eight they'll be happy yeah that coming all the way from america as as an, uh, like more of an am team but kind of a pro team at the same time uh, because it's a bit of a combination i think you'd be happy with top eight top six maybe top four every american's pro here in the uk but that is it for us over here. That's it for the day. That was the final match. So thank you very much from myself, Dan, the rest of the casters and all the staff here so far. It's been great. It's been fantastic. We will be live again tomorrow for Championship Sunday. But for now, we will finish this one off with an interview. Harry, and I believe it's Penguin down on the floor. Thank you very much, Sims. Yes, that's right. I'm here with Penguin from Stush Gaming. Congrats, mate. Congrats on the win. Um, sum up that series from your standpoint. Obviously, it was a very loud series. Uh, how did that go for you? 
Well, we're like quite a momentum team. Like we like to get loud because that's when we're playing confident. We're playing our best. Like we've all got like sick BRs. So like as long as we're like confident in our shot, like getting loud helps us to like you know get that momentum going. And just <laughs> if one of us is going off, then we all get hyped and just start gunning them. So. I said it was a very loud series. Was, is there any bad blood between you two? I noticed that a little bit of trash talk when it came your way. You just said, scoreboard? Scoreboard, yeah, because we were up like 100 points and someone's talking shit to me, or trash, sorry. And uh, yeah, and I was just like, come on, we're up by 100 points, we're two up in the series. Scoreboards, but uh, there's no real bad blood, you know, but it's just a team that we haven't actually scrimmed that much online, and I feel like they thought they would definitely beat us, we thought we'd definitely beat them, so it's good to play them and, you know, let them know. 3-0. You're three and one in the pools now, and you're in the bracket for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, what are your expectations for tomorrow? Um, we'll just take it game by game, like the generic Halo saying. Everyone says it, but you know, we'll see who we're up against. You know, hopefully we get like a, a nice, nice first game to ease us in. But I reckon we're probably going to go up against like Tox or something and just get <laughs> triple goose game one or something. So we'll see how it goes. But fingers crossed, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, and top 12 was like our minimum aim. Top eight is what we really want to get, so. Perfect, is there anyone, finally, that you want to play tomorrow that you haven't had the chance to play yet? I think we quite like to play uh, improv. We played them in a little scrim to warm up for this series, and we beat them in that, so we're feeling a little bit confident. Uh, they'll be a good team to play, and then probably the Swedish team, uh, I think they could revive, because uh, they're so spongy online, so we want to show them what's up on LAN. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Penguin, thank you so much for joining me now. I think we're going to go to the studio with Freya and Harry to wrap up the day's action. Thank you so much, Wonderboy. <laughs> it's great to get an insight from those guys down on the floor. And what a spectacular showing. To round off the day, completely blew our predictions out of the water, didn't they, Harry? It threw ours completely. I was just gobsmacked because it's the fact that I thought it was going to be 3-1 or 3-2 in favour of it. But it's, it's just weird how it's just a 3-0, but it was in comfortable fashion. They exactly. were dominating that Construct Hill game. Everyone went crazy positive. They're doing an objective like they should have been. And it's all the plays they were making is so well coordinated. And there's so many good things I can't say about this team because I did assume Demonica were going to want to come out on top. They were quite loud and proud. You saw from there earlier as well against SLG's team that they were looking very strong. And that gave me an indication whether, you know, they're very strong individually, but maybe because of this matchup's a little bit of a rivalry as well, maybe it kind of panics a little bit. I'm not too sure. Yeah, well, we can see from some of those highlights there that there were some spectacular plays going on. Um, I particularly want to point out how much momentum they were getting within the arena itself. They were so loud. They were shouting everything at each other, especially between, um, obviously, we saw Penguin and Manatee having that rivalry. Um, it's pretty uh, a, a, a spectacular show from, from, from both of them, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, we saw a couple of people fall off the map here and there just to, you know, <laughs> add insult to injury there, considering yes. their circumstances. But there was times where they tried to bring it back as much as they can, like morale-wise, but by then it was just a little bit too late. There was only too much they could have done. And I think it's like uh, Penguin said before, both teams felt like they were definitely going to win. And I think both teams were also underestimating each other. And I feel like with Demonica, they're the ones who can probably progress and maybe get things going. But I said it as well for the other team on Slush Gaming, it's the fact that if they do come out and Slush manage to make an impact straight away from the get-go and get out of the gates, then that's when they can continue on game after game. But 3-0, yeah. I don't think anyone will put no. it to that left, right, center. Definitely not, no. And I think it's great that we got to, um, well, Harry got to speak to Penguin um, down on the floor and they said they want to be finishing top eight. Are they a team that you think could be in contention with doing that? It really, it depends on the bracket. I think when they spoke about about improv as well. Like improv were actually quite decent from what we saw earlier, but you know, it's a difference between an offline scrim and offline environment in the tournament experience, you know. And you saw from earlier, improv were really well set up, they were well rounded, they did everything that needed to be done. There was a couple of plays where it could have been a bit quicker in terms of uh, actually executing, trying to get some of the flag on the hill. But apart from that, another good team which we can maybe see in the future. But it wouldn't surprise me if both those teams just went straight into losers or if they start in losers bracket and maybe get a bit of a run. But you saw from there, Penguin just wants to win at least one series to guarantee himself yeah. top eight. Well, let's take a look at our winner's bracket for tomorrow's championship Sunday and see what teams are going to be going into that. Um, obviously, Tox Gaming are going to be uh, one of their favorites coming into that. So they're going to be going up against Back to Classic. Then we've got Aspire Esports versus Lucendi Gaming.
got Mesa Gaming, who came through uh, the EU qualifiers, uh, going against Improv, RBL Esports, formerly uh, Moses the Clown, changing the name a little bit there, um, <laughs> going up against Tea and Crumpets, who are the uh, other NA team. Very uh, British name for that, though. That's what totally threw me off. Very Tea and Crumpets, loving it. Maybe, maybe it's, o it's an ode to, to Britain in that. I don't know. But um, obviously, those are the uh, games that we're going to be starting off in the winner's bracket. I think it's fair to say the Bachelor class are going to be having a tough time there. Yeah, it says that they will be on standby. And Team Crumpets is actually a team of uh, Guntime, Dragonite and the boys. So I think we'll have to see what they can do starting in the winner's bracket there. But those are the four teams waiting for the winner's matches to see who will be playing against them next. But I think from what we saw from those winner's bracket matches earlier on the last graphic, I feel like a lot of them will be quite predictable and what we expect. But it's a matter of these four teams will be ready for it, you know. Yes. Lethal, Divide, GG. I'm kind of a little bit surprised they'll be starting in losers, but we'll see how things pan out from there. With, uh, I think that's Lunny, Shabby, uh, Kimbo and Turks. We'll see what they can do, make a loser bracket run. But the sad thing is for these four teams is the fact that they only get one chance, unlike the other eight, but they really need to make it count. They need to come in hot on Sunday. Yeah, exactly. And let's remind ourselves exactly what they're playing for as we go into tomorrow's games. You've got $10,000 for that first place finisher. 6,000 for second, 4,000 for third place, 2,500 for fourth, and then fifth and sixth place get $1,250. So, I mean, it's a pretty mean prize pool considering it's an open tournament, it's two days. It really is, uh, you, you, you've got to come out hot to try and make it into that first place spot and potentially beat Tox Gaming, who I think it's, it, it's safe to say after today's results, heavy favorite. Yeah, oh, heavy favorites is a massive understatement. You know, coming in two days work, $10,000, I wouldn't complain compared yes. to when he used to win a few hundred quid. So, you know, <laughs> that's a massive difference. But yeah, we'll have to see how things pan out. Yeah, Tox are going to be heavy favorites no matter what. Even the top European team will struggle, let alone the low tier EU teams, which we saw earlier, which is not too much of a surprise. But, you know, I want to see how RBL Esports get on and see how they progress into the bracket if they match Tox what the difference is, because you know they've got Hollis now instead of their previous player. So I want to see how well they've gelled and how well Hollis actually plays with the rest of the game, because for those three players, not Joan, Moe's and Respectful, very, very aggressive, very strategical as well, such great game sense. But they've lost the Tox so many times, and when it happened again, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, we'll get to see as we head into tomorrow's game. Thank you so much for joining me on the desk all day here, Harry. Thank you very much for all our other analysts who've joined on. Our casters, obviously our lovely teams and our production crew will be seeing you tomorrow to make sure you tune in for more Halo 3 action.